My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Welcome to my channel. I appreciate everybody watching, liking, subscribing, uh, and commenting below. Um, please leave your Ethereum address or Bitcoin address below. I'm still doing the 100 subscriber and 150 subscriber giveaway for cold storage coin and $20. So uh, moving right into the market here, uh, it's at 253 billion. Yesterday it was at 273, 74 billion. So we lost about 20 billion in a day. And I kind of figured it was gonna happen. Uh, I haven't made a video in a couple days, few days actually, so I apologize for that, but I uh, had some issues um, around the house due to the weather and I uh, had to work and obviously uh, catch up on some bills. So uh, moving forward here, uh, Bitcoin is down to 63.90, so it just passed under that 6,400 mark. Um, I think we we're up around 6,800 uh, the last couple days. So now we're starting to go sideways again. Bitcoin dominance at 43.1%. Now, something I did really want to touch on here just real quick, um, you know, when Bitcoin's up at like 6,800, you know, Ethereum was up to, I believe, 480, 490 ish, something like that. Didn't break 500. And the last time that we were at 6,800 before I went all the way down to 5,800, you know, 5,750 around that area, um, you know, Ethereum was at around 520, 535, 40 when, it, when Bitcoin was at 6,800. Um, before it went down to 5,800. So, um, you know, the, the, the altcoins are getting hurt. I mean, especially with Bitcoin dominance at 43.1%, the altcoins are really getting hurt and, put, are hurt and pushed down uh, dramatically while Bitcoin can still, you know, um, recover with, you know, an, with an elephant footstep all the way back up to 6,800. And, you know, the altcoins follow Bitcoin dominance but they're not following it very close anymore. Um, and it's starting to get away uh, from the rest of the pack. And, 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 you know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a good thing overall if you look at the market in an overview sense. And the reason why I say it is because investors want to come in and they want to have um, price, good prices to buy their, their coins with, not just Bitcoin, but all coins. And uh, since last, I believe, mid-2017, was the last time that we were at these at these lows like this. So, um, you know, as you can see, Cardano is at a 13 cents, you know, and it hasn't been that low since last year. Um, uh, EOS is taking a pretty big hit right now. They're at 8% loss right now. They were at a 10% at one point uh, for EOS, but you know, they're, they're pretty down dramatically. Uh, you know, looking at the 24 hour changes, we only have two and really one significantly is KuCoin share. So, is everybody gearing up for something in KuCoin shares or are they just, you know, um, everybody looking for something to buy that was going up in price and KuCoin was the one to get on, the horse to get on. And then Mixin was barely even up. So, I, you know, again, I just want to touch on that. Bitcoin dominance is at 43.1%. I mean, big difference between 41, 39%, 42. Now we're at 43. Um, of course, so when it moves big, everything follows, but it's not following German or, you know, fast enough uh, with the market. So let's look uh, into Bitcoin just a little bit. So I threw a Fibonacci on here and um, uh, I put I put a corridor in there in here as well. So you guys can kind of see this corridor here um, on the highest points and the lowest points from that last dramatic low that we had. So, you know, moving in to the 618, which is the real Fibonacci line. Um, it broke that Fibonacci on its way down, uh, you know, in two hours. This is an hour chart from yesterday night on Hong Kong time and it broke in two hours you know I mean it was at five o'clock at night uh, Hong Kong time which is five o'clock in the morning our time uh, to seven eight you know nine, eight in the morning so I mean um, futures has a big thing to do with it obviously we all know that and um, you know is it gonna break that point that halfway mark which will basically break this corridor and if it does break that corridor, it's going to go down to the 382 Fibonacci line. If it does break that point, uh, the halfway mark in this corridor, I believe it's going to go down to the 382 line, or if not, Lamore. Um, it, it's just the way it goes. I mean, we've had four, one, two, three, four big elephant footsteps, and now we've had one big one. So is another foot going to come out of the water and make it go down again? It kind of looks like it's going to, unless they've kind of made a little trap like this one back back here. I don't know if you can really see it. Um, let's see if I can go in. If you can kind of look through the Fibonacci here, it dropped dramatically, it went sideways, and then boom, it went up. You know what I mean? And same thing over here. 
they drop down dramatically when sideways and then boom just back up basically to par so that's considered it's called a trap so is a trap forming right here um I, i'm actually hoping that it does that that a trap has formed and then it breaks that that 200 uh ema line and just keeps going up on an upward trend but uh as close as everything's looking right now, uh, the pot, you know, the probability that it's going to break and go down to that three, at least to that three A two line, um, seems more probable than it is going to go up. But again, you know, it, you know, what does everybody tell you? The first thing, if every, somebody tells you that it's going to go down, excuse me, someone tells you that it's going to go down, then you want to bet that it's going to go up. So that's just the way speculation goes um, in any market. So that's Bitcoin for you. Um, and I wanted to get into uh, my swing trades and kind of show you what I'm looking into. So with my swing trades, I showed you guys this in, in, in uh, previous videos. Um, I was doing this on a swing to core trading with uh, a lot of my uh, swing trades, quote unquote swing trades. And Zillica was a good one that I think I'm going to keep as my own personal swing trade. A couple of my trades, I'm actually going to move to the bot when I actually get my, uh, my profit trader bot up and running. Um, I've done all the the training and so on for the profit or for the bot, so um, it's now just trying to do all the test uh, bot testing and then uh, put it get it online and get it going. So I'm just uh, mining right now, so I need to you know accumulate a little bit more uh, coin so I can use it on the bot. So it's no no sense in buying the bot at the moment uh, to to use the test bot until I actually have enough money to uh, to actually uh, trade with. So. Uh, but I'm almost there. I'm almost at two Ethereum to to uh, start working with. So, um, let's see. Um, Silica. It's at seven seven cents. It was been down ten uh, percent um, from uh, yesterday, and yesterday I was actually at zero. So I haven't really made anything on Zilliqa, um, but it doesn't seem like it's going down very dramatically um, with the rest of the pack. So, kind of a good thing. So yeah, we hit that you know little spike there. Uh, a couple days ago and now it's on its way kind of down a little bit we'll see where it goes from here but zillica is one i'm going to keep uh, on a swing to core trade until i get my bot up and running then i can uh, figure out what's going on from there i mean the market is just it sucks guys we all know it the market sucks and we have to have all these investors coming in this is kind of why i don't really see it as a stress level thing because the, the lower that these prices go the invest the, the more incentivized the investor is going to want to come in and buy um, hopefully not OTC over the counter, hopefully in, in the market itself. So uh, HPB, high performance blockchain. I always call it high powered blockchain because it is supposed to be, it is high powered, but it is high performance. 182, I have not bought any more uh, high performance blockchain. Like I said, I kind of unplugged for the past uh, three, four days because, um, uh, you know, once you start getting too close to things, you start overthinking things. And, you know, the past couple of days actually did me really, really well. Um, to start looking at blank slates again and uh, you know better ideas were coming to my mind um, to uh, you know kind of slow down and, and not jump the gun with a lot of things prioritize basically so high power blockchain at 182 and uh, it's at an all-time low now the all-time low is at 176 and it hit that about recently so um, it's almost about time to buy some high power blockchain but again I got to get my bot up and running um, before I really am going to start buying anything uh, else at the moment. So a couple days, my bot's going to be up and running, I believe. And uh, then I can start uh, focusing back on my own trades for swing and core. And then have my bot do day trades for me, 15-minute trades, day trades for me, um, so on and so forth. And I'm going to be posting all my configurations and so on so you guys can uh, see what I'm doing um, and making profits uh, and gains and what styles I'm using and so on. Because you can use multiple styles of profit. I don't, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent, but you can use most multiple star, styles on a profit trailer um, to, um, you know, focus on your uh, buying and selling. So that's a good thing to see. So high power block performance blockchain, um, not doing too good. I've used the EMA 110 because it's too short. Can't make a 20 and 200. Uh, day traders in the stock market use the 20 and the 200 EMA and the SMA as well to do their uh, futures trading. So just that's why I like to, to look at the uh, 20 and the 200. So moving forward, uh, the other swing trades that I'm using right now is the key. I made a small little uh, modest profit off the key. I didn't sell at all, but I did sell some off um, of, my, of the key and um, I made a modest profit and um, uh, actually probably gonna buy back in here 
uh, once it hits another once it hits another drop here, one, another low, because uh, I think it's going to go down a little bit more. It just had its test net launch, so uh, you know it's going to do a small little, uh, I believe, drop down and then come back up. So uh, the key, just real quick, we'll look at Coinigy. Um, and as you can see, it's that 10 and 100. So usually do a, a 10 percent uh, uh, ratio between my uh, fast moving and my slow moving uh, average EMA. And uh, it seems to be working pretty good. It, it, it works as a good ceiling and the 10 works as a good guide on there. And uh, again, you know, with, with the key, I don't see it moving down too very much too far. This was right before the test net launch. This drop right here, um, if you can't see it, this drop right here. So I don't think it's going to go any much farther down. Now, the one that I'm really, really disappointed in, as far as my swing trades go, is, if it'll load for me here, is the Limpo coin. Limpo coin is doing horrible. I mean, it's down even under three cents. Now, did I buy, I bought a little bit at four, almost five cents, and now it's down under three cents. So do I have to buy more? I'm done with Limbo right at the moment. I'm just gonna hold it, wait for the uh, application to launch in September worldwide, and then hopefully it takes a, a nudge up from there because now I believe I'm DCA'd or average purchase price then at about seven cents now. So six, seven cents. So uh, good for me, just gonna have to wait for it at this point. Uh, and if you're gonna look at the Coinigy chart, real quick, quick like, we shall see that on a 10 and 100 EMA, um, it, it's under both, you know, and it looks like it's been under both for, for, for quite some time since it kind of broke this level over here. So, uh, I think it's going to stay down there for a while. You know, I've been doing a lot of, uh, watching a lot of news on Limpo and so on. Um, even though I've been unplugged, I've been, I've been looking at a lot of news to keep, uh, keep informed on things. And Limpo's doing a lot of traction in Asia. Um, they're moving into Singapore now, the Philippines, and, you know, just same like ADA. They're kind of following what ADA is doing um, uh, as far as their travel plans. And, uh, you know, they're hitting some pretty good things. But, again, the application cannot launch. Therefore, the usage of the coin cannot be used. So that's really, really hurting the, uh, uh, the price of limb right now. And, of course, the circulating supply as opposed to the market cap is very, very high. So... Not really good to see with Limpo until we can actually get these coins to be used instead of everybody holding them. So moving forward, I think this, this is my last swing trade. Neo, it's at 35. I believe it hit down to like 27 at its lowest point. Um, so is it going to go back up? Is it going to go lower? Is it going to stay? I mean, there's a lot of uh, you know give and take right now. I put this at the 2200 because I'm able to get that. And again, this is what uh, day traders use um, for futures markets. So uh, right here, the 200, it you know broke that 200 line, and it's been well under that red uh, uh, EMA 20 line, and it's still well over. It bumped up a little bit, I believe, up to level 40, 43, and now it's on its way back down 35. Now it's on the 20 EMA, uh, that red line. So you know, is going to break that red line and go back down? Um, you know, at the moment, because there's a lot of news of positive and negative news in, in the, um, the news right now. So I want to touch on this. Is Chinese crypto billionaire caught on tape bashing Binance, Neo, and uh, Qtum, you know, Quantum, whatever you want to call it. Um, and he was basically just saying, um, I mean, just a, a lot of things. The Binance founder, Zhao Changpeng, is described as not a good guy. Um so he, uh, he just has a lot. And he also says Tron founder Justin Sun is a scammer. And I, I'm not saying he's wrong because Justin Sun, he, he definitely is a salesman. I just don't see very much going on with Tron right now. I hold a lot of Tron and I'm waiting for it to go back up. But I may have to move that into my bot and just, uh, you know, take the loss and see if I can, you know, get my, my money back through the bot. But we'll, we'll see because I'm losing a lot of hope with Tron right now. Um, and everything else coming out. But, you know, they did a burn. They just did a burn. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, Neo, he's, you know, this is the thing that I really wanted to touch on. Neo is a stupid project, worthless. If you are Wang Lijie, the angel investor of Neo, you would have sold them at 1.5 RMB, as he did. Later, some big venture capital participated and hyped its price. Even Da, uh, da Hong Fei, founder of Neo, was holding very little Neo. 
really, really hard. Fest sad to see that, you know, a guy like this, he's a crypto million billionaire. I mean, he, he made his money off crypto uh, um, currency, you know, to now. So that's some negative news about NEO. Moving into some positive news about NEO. This is the Ethereum, ethereumworldnews.com. Uh, possible golden opportunity to invest in NEO as predictions are record-like. So as they are, they're right, they are record-like when it comes to the price of NEO. Uh, because again, it was down to 27 at one point and now it's up to 35. Seven days ago is at uh, 27. February is at 144. So if you want to go back to January and February, December, January and February and where it was sitting, I mean, it did go up there, you know, pretty dramatically at 100, 187 in January, 144. And now we're at 35. So is that a deal? I mean, hopefully that the investors see it as a good deal. Uh, again, this, this city of Zion, um, they are the first node to be, in, uh, de uh, they consider it the decentralization of its blockchain um, because of city of Zion consensus node under the NEO main network. So I kind of looked into the city of Zion, as I said I would, and uh, it, you know it doesn't seem like they really have um, a bad. It's not a bad group. So as you see, city of Zion are an independent group made of translators, designers, and developers with a global reach that have teamed up to back up Neo Core and the network as as a total. So they're backing it up. You know, and are, are they taking charge? I can see that they're kind of the power be behind the throne. So I'm, I'm, again, I want to look into it, but because of the group of translators, designers, and developers, you know, these are the guys that are on the ground. These are these are the guys in the field doing the dirty work. Those are the type of people actually I'd rather have, um, you know, uh, making sh calling the shots when it comes to consensus nodes because they understand the nitty gritty of it. So. Um, I don't know if that's actually a, a huge negative deal. That might be a really good positive deal for City of Zion. So, uh, you know, some, again, I just wanted to go over my swing trades today and kind of what's going on with Bitcoin. Haven't I made a video in a few days? Um, and I just wanted to catch up on some things and kind of catch up with everybody with uh, what's going on with my trades and what my, my plans are going forward, so on and so forth. So um, I'll keep you guys informed with uh, the bot trading and uh, what I'm going to be doing with my swing trades and so on and so forth. And uh, last but not least, we will look into the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Doesn't look too bad, actually. 37. Yesterday was 39. Last week was 33. So it's actually still up. Um, and it's still gradually kind of going up. So doesn't look bad. It doesn't look fearful um, as much as uh, Bitcoin just took a hit. Uh, maybe tomorrow we'll, the gauge will reflect that, but right now it's not doing that. So you guys have a great day. My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the comment, leave a comment, hit the bell, and you guys have a great day. Keep up the grind.